What's going on YouTube? It's your fellow reefer here with another update. And today we're gonna to be going over the 120 gallon reef tank and pretty much how all the corals have been doing since I dosed the hydrogen peroxide. So right here we have my giant frog spawn uh, colony and there's about 20 heads on this guy if not more and he was actually okay ever since I dosed the hydrogen peroxide but there's really uh, no issues with him at all from different angles from top to bottom even from my side angle on the left side of the reef tank you can see how big he actually is and I'm really happy that he's so strong and he's going to keep on growing so I'm excited for this guy here we have the uh, fungi play coral and at first I was really worried about him because he started bleaching out and I really wanted him to live you know nice bright colors but as you can see there the white is actually starting to go away and turn back to orange I've been doing a lot of water changes in this tank so I'm really happy that to see him actually come back to life it just makes me know that everything's working Part of the new coral batch that I got was this giant uh, zoa colony. There's uh, different colors in there, red, a little bit of blue, orange, green. So it's a nice showpiece for the middle of my tank. It's just one rock and on the outside is a lot more zoas, but he wasn't harmed at all from the hydrogen peroxide. Not all of them are opened up right now, but it's a nice showpiece and I'm excited for this guy too. So. A little up top more from the Zoas, we have this SPS, I think it's called a Meteor Shower, if I'm not mistaken, but it wasn't affected at all by the hydrogen peroxide, it's pretty strong, and as you can see there's actually looks like a couple more uh, toadstools popping out from the right side, even some in the back there, but I'm really happy with this SPS, I'm happy that I have it, I just want it to keep on growing, so happy with it. The leathers you see on the left side are pretty damaged from the hydrogen peroxide. Hopefully they bounce back, but if they don't, they don't. I have a lot more leathers that are replaceable, but this SPS I'm really excited for. Zooming out and going to the left side of my tank, you can see this nice hammer coral that I have for quite some time now. When I first got him, he had two heads, and now he has four going on to five. Such a strong coral, it wasn't affected by the hydrogen peroxide either. Uh, you'll see later in the video what uh, corals were actually really affected by it, and I'll get into that. But as for the hammer, it's doing its own thing, it's strong, and it's going to keep on growing, so excited for this guy. Moving down more, we can see one of the first corals that got affected by the hydrogen peroxide, which was the candy canes. Uh, obviously, they're not supposed to look like this but with water changes in time, I actually believe there is hope for these guys. Even ones in the back there, I think about moving them, but the candy canes, I feel, are gonna be just fine. Some are a little fried out, yeah, and uh, that's okay. You know, as long as you have one head living, then others will grow, but I think we're gonna have more than one uh, be all right. So it just takes time with these guys, so hopefully everything works out for the best. Right here we have an Octospawn, if I'm not mistaken, and he's liking his spot. He was a little affected by the hydrogen peroxide, but not really. As you can see, he's pretty much doing just fine, and um, I'm really happy with him. I have another Octospawn, if I'm not mistaken, up here. I think he's also uh, just fine. He was by the meteor shower first, and I realized he was stinging the meteor shower. So we had to move him, the spot I moved him is up here. So I'm really happy that he's liking his new spot. And the growth on this guy I think is gonna go uh, pretty off the wall. I think the hammer coral below him was doing great because of the spot and he's not too far away from it. Some little mushrooms scattered around, uh, which brings me to the mind trick coral. The mind trick coral was a little burned from the hydrogen peroxide, but nothing crazy. Uh, he likes his spot a lot. I'm gonna keep him here. Polyps are out. It's showing good color. I'm happy with him. 
A little down more we have this orange coral that I really liked. Uh, it's a new coral. A lot of these corals you see are new. I don't know the name of this guy, so if you know the name of him, please drop a comment below and let me know. Apparently he's a slow grower. I was on a live chat last night and Billy was telling me, but I uh, really like him. He's a uh, nice bright color in the tank. If he's slow grower, he's a slow grower. I like how he's next to my GSP, which adds a little more color to him. It's kind of like surrounding him. Uh, but all in all, he's doing just fine. Moving up, we have uh, one of my favorite corals in the tank is my Duncan Coral. Stored off at one head, now he has almost 8 to 10. He was affected by the uh, hydrogen peroxide a little bit, but as you can see here in the video, it's doing just fine. All the pops are out, all the heads are out, uh, his tentacles are out, everything's out. So he's like in his new spot where I put him up a little higher than usual. Uh, it's a low flow area, so he's good. To the right of him, we have the uh, Fabias, the Fabias, and a, a little bit of them got lost in color, I would say, uh, maybe because of this uh, plate coral that we'll get into in a second, but if you see in the back there, uh, a lot of them are actually okay, so I'm pretty sure it might just be from the plate coral that's covering him a little bit, but he's doing good, so I'm happy with that. Coming on to the plate coral, this is actually a really... Um, well, cup slash plate coral. I was really worried about him because the hydrogen peroxide. When I first got him, he was kind of a tealish blue, and you might see that tealish blue right now, which is a good thing. But right now, he's uh, going back to that. Prior, he turned purple. So after the hydrogen peroxide, he turned purple, and I was really worried. But with the water changes, after water change, after water change, he's starting to get his color back. You can see his polyps are actually coming out now. So hopefully he'll be all right. I think. Oh, and all guys, we're gonna be okay with these corals here. The hydrogen peroxide's not gonna stand a chance against these, uh, you know, really re resistant corals. Going down a little further, we have a nice little leather. Uh, you can see it's actually on its last phase of the shedding right here, or the mucus, whatever you want to say. Uh, the polyps are out, which is really happy with, but. I had really, uh, I was really worried about the squirrel because it was closed up for a long time. But leathers can be tricky; they can close up for days. And we'll bring you to my other leather in a little bit to show you how one is still closed. But for this guy, he's in the last of his shed. His polyps are out. He's gonna be opened up. The Monty right next to him, SPS. Uh, you can see in the history, definitely has grown a lot. You know, with all the spikes there. I think he lost a little bit of color in the video, but I can assure you in person he's bright orange. So he's doing okay too, I'm not worried about him whatsoever. This is a good spot for these corals, and uh, I think for the most part of these guys are also going to be okay, which I'm happy with. A coral that I'm worried about besides the candy canes is bringing me to coral number two, which is the Hollywood Stunner. Hollywood Stunner definitely got beaten up by the hydrogen peroxide. I am still worried about him. Hopefully he'll be alright, but as long as one lives, uh, I, you know, he can obviously keep growing. But definitely lost some color, and I am still worried about this coral. Hopefully with uh, water changes, he'll be alright. To the right of him, moving along, we have my little Kenya tree leather. And uh, he was down and out for a little while. He was uh, leaning over, limping over, shedding, and just time goes on and then water changes uh, he's back up it's perked up so if you guys see all these little uh, little side note all this little stuff flowing around it's from the shedding now my toadstool is want oh, I want it to be my pride and joy I love this toadstool I've seen it open before it's huge and I really want it to open up it's taking a little while but like I said before, leathers can be tricky, guys. They could not open up for days. And it's a new coral on top of that. Polyps show they want to come out, but it's still taking time. It is still shedding. Uh, I'm not moving it too much. I just want to keep it there and let it do its thing. But just like this leather over here, besides the glare, uh, it's shedding. So it is still shedding. It's healing itself. So hopefully through time this coral will be okay that's all I can do is just give it time and continue my water changes so hopefully it'll be alright the GSP is open back up now 
Um, not fully yet, there's still some patches that need to be opened up. And this is a large piece of GSP. A lot of the green hair algae was on this guy. So he got sprayed with the hydrogen peroxide. It's taking him a little longer, but he's going to be alright. It's GSP. We all know how that is. My little frag rag here. Just some zoas and polyps. Um, nothing really crazy, but some cool colors. Just thought uh, this little frag right here on the right hand side would die, but he's alright. So Zooming out and getting my focus back. Let's go over this anemone right here. Another new coral. I actually want him to move from this spot. I uh, want to get rid of this little piece of rock here. I want it to open up a little more. Uh, I don't care where he goes as long as it's not bothering the corals, but he's doing okay. Some more polyps all around. Which brings me closer to like my little mushroom garden I got going on here. We got some orange ones, which are really nice. And then we also have some red ones too, uh, lower of that. We also have some blue mushrooms scattered around the whole entire tank. I want to bring those down to this area, next to the green, the orange, and the reds, but we'll see. They're doing fine. This uh, frog spawn over here, if I believe it's a frog spawn? No, it's not. I think it's an octa spawn. Not really sure, but uh, I want to move him over to where this candy cane is, like I said earlier, um, just to fill in that spot there. I think he's going to do better there. So, all in all guys, the tank is actually doing pretty good. Uh, I'm really happy with how everything is healing up and going to survive. It shows that with water changes and time and patience, you know, you can really take care of your tank. It looks like a chemical warfare here, and uh, it just takes time. You know, if something's going wrong in your tank, don't give up. Just keep doing water changes. Check your parameters. You know, make sure your salinity is good. Just make sure everything's okay. So... Besides the tank, I want to show you guys how the filtration system is doing. So coming down to the filtration system, we have the Ruby 36S sump with the Bubble Magus Curve 5, my custom manifold that I made with my brother. And I have to change that uh, skin made out, got to replace that. You can see that I have the Curve 5 on a little uh, platform there, some old stuff I was using just to help out with the skimmer breaking in. Bubble Magus Curve 5 guys, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, my reactor's there, and my manifold. So, all in all, the filtration system's good. My refugium is good, too. Chato is doing okay. Not growing crazy, but my parameters are all in check. So, obviously, something's doing okay. So, nothing really crazy going on with the filter. Just trying to keep it clean, keep it maintenance, you know. And uh, there's lights just want to show them off to you guys like a party in here to change the colors and all that but when you had the lights off you know it's really hard to see so for the most part I, uh, I bought these lights in order for myself to see when I'm working on my tank when I'm maintaining my tank and cleaning my tank I really just have to keep them on white that way it's easy for me to see but they definitely help out if you guys don't know where to get them go to Home Depot or Lowe's they have them there just buy batteries you can nail them in there and that's pretty much my uh, filtration system. So that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm going to try and keep you guys updated on my tank as much as I possibly can. Uh, letting you guys know how the corals are doing. Like I said, the only corals I'm really worried about is the candy canes, which I actually think will be okay. So I'm not actually worried about them. Take that back. The Hollywood Stunner, uh, my old Xenia that I used to have. I didn't show you guys in this video. It's pretty fried up. You can't even see it. So, my Hollywood Stunner and my Xenia and the Toadstool. Hopefully those guys will be okay, but hey, three out of however many corals I have ain't bad. So, through water changes in time, we'll see. Thanks for watching this episode, guys. I'll see you on the next one.